In this lesson, we'll look at a quick way to calculate combinations. Now here's the combination formula. We can use it to determine the number of ways to select R objects from N unique objects when the order of the selected objects does not matter. Now while it's perfectly fine to memorize this formula, there is a faster way to calculate combinations. To see how the faster technique works, let's first calculate 8 choose 3. Here, n equals 8 and r equals 3. So when we plug these values into the formula, we get the following. Our next step is to simplify 8 minus 3, which equals 5. To evaluate this, we'll expand the factorials, and at this point we can cancel some of the numbers in the numerator and denominator. We'll begin by cancelling the 5s, 4s, 3s, 2s, and 1s from the top and bottom. When we do this, we get the following. Now here comes a very important observation. Notice that the numerator now consists of the first three terms of 8 factorial, and the denominator is 3 factorial. It seems that the number 3 plays an important role in this calculation. But where does it come from? Well, it comes from up here. It is the value of r. We are selecting a set of three objects from eight objects. So to generalize the role that r plays in calculating combinations, we can say that the value of n choose r will always be equal to the first r value of n factorial over r factorial. Now let's continue with our calculations. We can further simplify this expression by recognizing that we can cancel the 6 in the numerator with the product 3 times 2 times 1 in the denominator. When we do this, we get 8 times 7, which equals 56. So 8 choose 3 is equal to 56. Now let's practice this technique. We'll begin with 10 choose 2. Here the r value is 2, so the numerator will be the first two values of 10 factorial, and the denominator will be 2 factorial. Next we'll expand 2 factorial, and we can now simplify this to be 45. So we can select two objects from a group of 10 objects in 45 different ways. Let's try one more. How about 7 choose 3? Here the r value is 3, so the numerator will be the first three values of 7 factorial, and the denominator will be 3 factorial. Next we'll expand 3 factorial. When we do this we can see that we can cancel the 6 in the numerator with this product in the denominator to get 35. So three objects can be selected from a group of seven objects in 35 different ways. Now before we end this lesson, I want to examine a special case. What happens if we have a combination question where we have n objects and we want to choose zero of them? For example, let's say we have eight employees and we must choose zero of them to be on a committee. In how many ways can we do this? Well, to find out, we must evaluate eight choose zero. Now if we use our shortcut here, we run into a problem. When we apply this rule, we see that the numerator will be the product of the first zero values of 8 factorial. So what does this equal? Now the denominator equals 0 factorial, and we learned in an earlier lesson that 0 factorial is equal to 1. So the denominator isn't really a problem here. We do, however, have a problem with the numerator. So how do we evaluate this? Well, perhaps we should apply some logic here. We have eight employees, and we must choose zero of them. We can accomplish this task in one way. Nobody is on the committee. Now, if that explanation feels inadequate, let's evaluate eight choose zero using the original formula. So we'll replace n and r with eight and zero to get the following. And now we can simplify this to get eight factorial over zero factorial times eight factorial. And since 0 factorial is equal to 1, we can see that 8 choose 0 evaluates to be 1. So in general, we can say that n choose 0 will equal 1. Okay, that concludes this lesson on a quick way to calculate combinations. Be sure to practice this technique so you can save time on test day.